Because I had the same barber for almost 30 years. He doesn't get too upset at what I'm doing here, man. Well, he's in California, so. <laughs> but he might see this, Kev. Got me under pressure, man. What's going on, beautiful people? It's Big Chris here at the Beard Brand Barbershop in Austin, Texas. I'm with my homie, Big Kev. How and um, he's gonna get full transformation today. All this hair out of there. This beard, that's turning into a goatee. Don't move. My barber back in California, he had three Kevins. Yeah, three Kevins. Actually, four. <laughs> you guys are everywhere, man. There was Kev, mm -hmm. little Kev, big Kev, <laughs> and I was big, big Kev. Big, big Kev. <laughs> so you show me that photo. Looks like he had a lot less hair on the top than what you got now, and then a, a skin lot. fade on the side. Yep. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna start off with the number three, just to see how much it takes off. I think I'm gonna be going down to a two or a one and a half, but I can always take more off. Can't put it back on. Exactly. <laughs> That's how long are you gonna be in town for, man? I, I'm just, I'm coming to get a haircut, fart around, drive back home. No oh, man. Oh, dude, thanks for making me part of your trip, dude. I mean, it's only an hour trip, so. I guess it's not too big of a deal when you, you know. You Coming like from that. the Bay Area, an hour trip is like, you don't measure, you don't measure drives in um, hours, distance. Oh, distance. You say, okay, it's gonna take you about 45 minutes and it can be 12 miles. <laughs> Although 35 coming into, um, in the Austin, it was kind of like starting to get on my nerves a little yeah, bit. Yeah, man, it used to not be so rough. There was a point where like every year traffic got worse and then it was every six months traffic got worse. Sometimes, man, I feel like it's every other week, man. This is another, another level of frustrating. I'm going to take my trimmer back up to here. Just knock it all the way down the wood. So man, after your hair's cut, do you typically throw any product in there, man? Huh? Do you throw any product in your hair after it's been cut? No, rarely. Rarely. How about for your goatee, man? Throw any beard products in there? Nope. All right. I'm gonna send you home with a little something to help you today. Definitely send you some um, beard stuff so you can keep that goatee nice and, nice and, uh, I don't know, man. We're getting close to the end of the day. Moisturize? Yeah, man. moisturize. Thank you, Ben. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I created a bald out um, from that number three with my trimmer. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to leave about a thumb's width of stubble underneath where we went bald there. And we're going down all the way baby bottom smooth with my uh, Andis uh, foil shaver. And this may sound weird, but I'm gonna try to fade some of this stubble out. Especially as we get into the to the bottom of uh, the haircut. And so I'm gonna create my first se section with my uh, Mandis Master all the way open. And I've heard people say, you know, go, go up an inch, go up half an inch. For me, it's, um, if the mid fade line is here, then the high fade is here. I take it all the way open until where that high fade would start. And the same is true if this was a low fade. Like I would take the master open until where we balled it out for the mid fade. So it would come all the way up here. And then the whole fade would be sort of moved down in that scenario.
I'm going to close the master halfway, but only go up about halfway here. And I'm going to start to create a fade from, you know, baby bottom skin into a number one. I'm going to close it all the way and I'm going to try to take out some of that weight at the very bottom from where I open the clipper. So I did master all the way open here. Now I've got a number one guard on. And I'm going to take it up just a little bit right here. And then I'll come back and close it and try to get rid of some of that bulk you see there. And if that doesn't work, I got some other tricks. All right, so that's one, one and a half. Still looks a little heavy in between that master open area and the one and a half. So I'm gonna grab the zero guard, close it, and just, yeah, I might go halfway open and just, just try to knock out some of the weight where I see it. Just trying to get this fade as smooth as possible. And the hair follicle is always denser back here. I feel like it always takes a little more time to smooth out this part of the fade. So now I'm switching to detachable clipper because I'm looking for more of a consistent cut as we go into the top. So this is my number two blade, and I'm just slightly going behind that, that one and a half there, man. This is a number three detachable, which is a little bit shorter than a number three plastic guard. So I'm hoping it transitions into the top really, really nice. And believe it or not, I want to come back with this clipper and just kind of go over the head again. I'm just making sure everything's nice and even. So I'm edging up the haircut, basically the corner of his eye and the edge of his hairline here. And that's pretty much where I know where to, where to drop that line in. Right here in this area. And when you're edging up this texture, you can't go and push in. You sort of got to land it and pull out. So otherwise that line will be way back here before you know it. I just want to do like a little bit of a natural edge here. Clean up the bottom of this beard, which will become a go-to. Just a little bit, and then we'll come through and start blasting out the sides here. There's some crazy guy on YouTube that takes those Teslas and like throws them in like an Audi or something like that. Rich Rebuilds. Yes, that dude. That's my guy. What's up to Rich Rebuilds? Love watching you, man. He was on our channel. He was, man. Yeah. Yes, he was at the Dapper Den. He was. Shout out to the Dapper Den. Actually, he's, um... You know him? Nah, he's in Connecticut, I believe. Man, that was up. I shouldn't have said that <laughs> He's a Connecticut kid? Yeah. That makes sense, so I think that's where that shop is. Thank you. 
I mean, it just takes straight ingenuity to yeah. to figure that stuff out, and you know. But he he was given. I mean, like he wasn't given anything. Yeah. Um, just straight junkyard parts from what it he, looked like. And no information, and uh, he's figuring it out, and that takes. That takes mad brains to do something like that. So I'm gonna start shaping the goatee a little bit. I mean, I got like a very rough framework for what I want, but um, this is my first time cutting Kev's hair, so I'm just gonna chip away at it little by little and see what the hair reveals to me, as, uh, as we like to say in the industry. Time for the big reveal, man. Let's see if that's something you can live with. B would be proud of you. <laughs> oh, man. How about the goatee? How's that looking to you? I've never had it squared off like that before, but I think I'll live with that. Let's see how that goes. All right, so we'll do some hot lather. We'll do a hot towel, and then um, I'll come back with a little more lather. And we'll do the shave, and then I'll come back with a cool towel. I got some beard brand. I'm gonna throw into your goatee too, man. So before I did the shave, man, I ran over to the product wall and I grabbed some of our uh, utility balm, which is sort of like a beard balm. Um, there's some heavier moisturizers in there than our beard oil. And that's, um, we're gonna use this utility balm to style your goatee today, man. So maybe I grabbed like a dime size of this stuff, emulsify, and you're just gonna kind of distribute. I'm working it all the way down to the skin here. And you can put this stuff in the top too, man, if you need like a little bit of a juicy look upstairs. Okay. Throw some of the stash, man. That uh, beard balm I wanted to, excuse me, the utility balm that I wanted to send you home with. I see my good man. <laughs> 